Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Beck Brace and a new machine learning tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn how to forecast sales using machine learning and reinforcement learning. To train machine learning models, we're going to use linear regression, random forest regressor, and XGBoost regressor algorithms. I'm going also to leave the link for the data set in the description section below so you can download it and work with me. And I'm not going to use VS Code, instead I'm going to use Google Collab so you can start coding directly without uh, pipnv or pip install any packages. You got everything uh, pre-installed to you. So go ahead to your browser. I'm using Google uh, Chrome here and just type Google Collab. Welcome to Collaboratory Google Research. And you will have your introductory or the home page. So here you have the recent files that I've opened, some examples your Google Drive, GitHub, and upload if you want to upload any uh, Jupyter Notebook here to work with. Okay, so let's actually, you can go directly and uh, click New Notebook, and you can do the same from File, um, New Notebook. So it's the same. So here, just simple as that. And here you can do the same thing, File, New Notebook. So you can uh, rename your file here. I'm going to call it sales underscore forecast, hit enter. And as I told you, you can just start importing stuff. So import OS. So this is a code line, right? This is a Python code line. You can run cell, you can control enter if you like shortcuts. So this is only will execute that code line. All right, perfect. So this green sign here means that everything went okay and the cell executed. You can add a new code by just hitting plus code or you can do the same here. You can also add a text if you want, but not to confuse with a comment because normally you can add a comment like you would do in Python um, editor, right? You can do like that. This is a comment. The second thing that I want to show you is to add a new code block or we can just simply hit enter and continue importing as you like uh, but just for clarity i'm going to do this like here and i'm going to import pandas as pd how awesome is that it just it's auto completing and everything is pre-installed um, let's also import numpy Perfect. Also, I need matplotlib. Matplotlib.py um, pyplot as plt. Right, perfect. Next, I want the xgboost. Um, not import, but from the xgboost, I want to import the xgb regressor. And now I want the science kit learn or the SK learn and everything again is pre-installed. So you don't have to worry about um, the updates or anything. You just type your code and Google Collab takes care of it. Now I want the random forest regressor. Also I want um, I want the linear model, the linear regression. So it's from the sklearn dot linear model. I want to import the linear uh, the linear regression. Also, I want the min max scalar. So from sklearn sklearn.preprocessing I want to import the min max scalar now I want our um, evaluation metrics the um, mean absolute error mean squared error and the r2 score All right so for that I need from the sklearn package.metrics to import the mean absolute error the mean squared error and the r2 underscore score all 
right, great. Um, also from the TensorFlow models, the sequential, the dense and LSTM, but there are different um, packages. One is for the, from the models and one from the layers. So from tensorflow.keras.models, I want to import the sequential and instead of the models here, got the layers and here I need the dense and the LSTM. All right, sweet. Um, TensorFlow, not uh, with an E, but oops, okay, don't like that. What did I do? Okay, uh, Tensor, Tensor. All right, you can hit Control S to save the file, by the way. Right, so now this file is saved on your Google Drive. So the next time you will enter your Google Collab, you can see here my, it just um, logged in with my profile because I, I was already logged in, but you're probably uh, going to uh, be asked to log in. Also, let's do like that from tensorflow.keras.callbacks now because I need the, the early stoppings, uh, the early stopping, sorry, and the mo model checkpoint. So I need the callbacks. and the early stopping. I love machine learning, by the way. I love machine learning, data science. I'm fascinated with uh, robots, with AI and all of that. So if you will seem a little bit excited, don't be surprised. All right, great. Uh, now uh, let's go ahead and import that file because we'll need to read from that file. This file actually, will have the data for different stores. Let me actually show you. Let me uh, let me actually show you in VS Code first. So you can see here that we have uh, how many records? 91,000, yeah, there you go. 913,000 records, okay? All of that actually is what is the data for different stores. So the sales number for that item at that store on that specific date, all right? And this is basically data for the years from 2013 till 2018. So for that time span, for these five years, we're going to work with this data in our machine learning tutorial. So I'm actually going to upload that file to my Google Collab. So we're going here, section, okay, make like that. Oops, no, nope. uh, here. Yeah. So here you got some uh, sample data the test and the train for the California housing. So whatever, we're going to um, actually upload our file and you will get this message reminder, uploaded files will get deleted when this runtime is recycled. Well, fair enough. Uh, we don't want our files to be uploaded uh, on the cloud there. So every time you will open your notebook, you will need to upload that file. Okay, a little bit tedious, but um, yeah, it is what it is. So now here, as I showed you, you can run uh, just by one line. And here, if you will execute that or run the cell, it will run this cell. But if you want to run everything together, you can go to runtime and run all. It will start from the top until the last uh, code line. Okay, so let's actually do that. You can, if you like um, shortcuts like I do, you can hit Control F9. So you see, uh, execute the first block, uh, first cell, and then the second cell. All right, perfect. No errors there, no issues, perfect. Let's close this for the moment. Now let's go ahead and um, start reading from that train CSV file. So I'm going to add a new code cell here. And let me create a new uh, variable, declare a new variable, pandas.readcsv, and the name of the file is train.csv. All right. And then store underscore sales dot, I want the first, uh, the first rows, the first lines. So let's run that. 
Okay, perfect, because it has read actually from our train.csv file, right? So we got here the date, the store, the item, the sales, like I showed you in the VS Code, exactly the same thing, from 0 to 9, so the first 10 lines. Okay, fantastic. All right, perfect. Let's now add a piece of text just to tell you what I'm going to do next. What I want to do next is to check for null values. We don't want any null values in the data set. So here, check um, for null values in the data set. And directly we can add a code. So you can see this is the text, the explanation of the code. Okay, so we can take the store underscore sales and can get the info to understand what we have. So great, we have a column, so the name of the column, date store item sales, the number, this is auto-generated. We have 913,000 rows and the count here, we have non-null, so we have everything is non-null, perfect. And the data type, so we have the date, which is object, integer 64, which is uh, the store, the item sales, because they, they are naturally integers. Okay, great. But since we will deal with the overall sale of the items in all of the stores, we will need to disregard the columns representing the store ID and the item ID. So we'll need to drop those two items or those two lines, all right? Let's do that. Let's add a text. Dropping store and item columns. Okay, so let's overwrite the sales. This is equal to store underscore sales dot drop. Um, and we want to drop the store and the item. Oops. And here the axis is equal to one. Great, let's actually check out what we have so far after dropping. So store underscore sales dot info. So now you can see that the item and the store have been dropped. We have now the date and the sales. Okay, fantastic. Now we will need to work a little bit on the date. The date column in the data set is of object data type, and that's not correct. We will need to convert it to date time data type so we can use it for further calculations in our tutorial. All right, so let's do that. So here I'm going to say converting um, date to uh, from object data type to date time data type data type. All right, so let's add that code. We will take the store underscore sales with the uh, index of date and the pandas to date time. And then again, store underscore sales with the date. Just for consistency, I'm going to make it also single quotes. All right, great. So just to see what we have store sales info just to see is if the data type yeah indeed the data type has been changed from object to date time 64 right fantastic okay so rather than predicting the sales on the very next day we want to train the models to predict the sales in the next month so we need to convert our date to a period of a month and then we're going to sum or add the number of items sold in each month. So let's add that text. So converting, uh, converting date to a month period, and then sum the number of items in each month. All right. So let's add that code. So that's really very um, simple. So what we will do is we will take the store sales variable with the sub um, item of date. Then 
dot to period to period m which stands for month and then I'm going to declare a new variable called monthly underscore sales and this is equal to store underscore sales dot going to group by I'm going to group by date and I'm going to sum then I'm going to reset the index All right control s to save let's run that all right, great. Now let's actually um, get the timestamp and get the first in columns like we did before. So we're going to convert the resulting date to timestamp data type. Okay, let's add that piece of code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take again the monthly sales with the sub date equal to again monthly sales um, with the date dot dt to timestamp to timestamp all right and that's it basically now it has been converted to timestamp um, let's actually let's actually add another line here and let's get the head uh, the 10 heads of the monthly sales just as a sample right so head 10 perfect great so we got the date here and we got the sales fantastic Let's now visualize the monthly sales of the items. So visualization. Let me add a code here. So we're going to uh, plot that with the figure, fig size. I always write fig size, which sounds German. <laughs> okay, 15 and 5. And, oops. And now we're going to plot, going to take the monthly sales. I hope this is better for you guys to see. Monthly sales, sub date, and monthly sales, sub sales for the, um, for the axis, for the, the, um, the X and Y axis plot like that. All right, so the sales is the X axis, the date is the Y axis, the vertical and the horizontal. So let's give that some labels, plot.x label. So the X label is going to be date here. So plot, oops, plots, X label, and this is date, and the Y label is going to be sales. All right, perfect. And also we can give a title, plot.title. And here I can say monthly customer sales. All right. And let's show that finally, plot.show. And let's run that code. Let's see what we'll have. All right, perfect. So we have the dates here from 2013 to 2018 and the sales on the vertical axis right so yeah great so you can see here uh, in may we have 795 and it has increased to 855 so from uh, we are talking in 2013 so in may it continues to grow to grow until it reaches the peak between August and September. Between August and September, actually, yeah, this was the peak. Because after the 689,000 pieces, it started to fall again. To hit 656,000 pieces. So since data is showing an increasing trend over time, as you can see here, 
well, for the most part, we need to make this data stationary to improve the training phase of the learning models. So we can simply call the difference on the sales columns to make our sales data stationary. So let's do that. Let's actually call the difference to make the sale, the sales data, oops, stationary. And let's get the monthly sales with the sales underscore diff is going to be equal to the monthly sales with the sub sales dot diff like that. And then the monthly sales being over written here monthly underscore sales dot drop the not available or not uh, drop na right the non available here and we're going to return the 10 first columns uh, monthly sales dot head 10 right let's run that all right so this is here first so the first of february so this is the whole month of January, right? 1st of February, which means 31st of January. So the whole month of January. So this is the starting point here. And I reckon that the sales difference is the difference between um, January 2013 and December 2012. There's no other explanation for sales difference because this is the first month, right? So uh, let's actually calculate uh, just to double check that. As I'm an accountant, I love always to use the calculator. So let's go ahead and actually calculate the difference between um, January, because this is January, right? And this is February. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, 617382 minus 459417. Right, we got 157,965 um, pieces, right? This is the difference. This is the increase in sales, basically, right? From Jan and so on, from Jan to February, February, March, and so on. And again, not be confused. The 1st of February means the 31st of uh, January. That's the, the month and the whole month of January. I hope this makes sense to you guys. Let's uh, go ahead and visualize that. So plot dot figure. I'm going to take the fig size again with dimensions of 15 and 5. Okay, let's run that code and boom, sales difference. I didn't give it, um, let's actually give it a title um, plot.title. So we're going to call that monthly customer sales difference titles are always important difference titles are always important if you're going to do some uh, presentation to your boss or your colleagues or whatever so this is the monthly customer so sales difference all right this is exactly what we have explained here above all right, so we need to train our models now to predict the sale of the items in the next month and we'll do that by looking at the sale of items in a specific number of previous month. So we need to prepare a supervised data set to feed it into the machine learning model. So for this tutorial, we're going to keep the look back number of month to be 12. So for example, previous 12 month sale data will be used to predict the sales in the successive 12 month. So first of all, we need to drop off the date and sale here. Why? Because we'll be only dealing with stationary sale data. And we're going to use that to train the machine learning model uh, as well as the reinforcement learning model later. Let's actually write dropping off sales and date. Let's add that code. So our uh, so what we want to create now is the supervised data, right? So supervised underscore data 
is equal to the monthly sales dot drop and we're going to drop as we said date and the sales again access equals to one all right let's run that so now we will need to prepare the supervised data now we actually have dropped the date and sales right but we didn't prepare it yet so we'll prepare it in a matter that um, the 12 month sale or the, the previous 12 month sale uh, will be will act as the input features and then the um, next 12 month sale will be used as the output for our supervised learning models so let's actually write a comment here guys for you to understand what's going on so preparing the supervised supervised data so i'm going to iterate over um, 1 to 13 right exclusive which means that from 0 to 12 for 12 months so i'm going to use the for loop here for i in range 1 to 13 i want the column name to be equal to month underscore just to concatenate with the iterator here and then the supervised data or the sub um, call name or column name is equal to the supervised supervised oops super supervised data sub sales underscore diff or difference dot shift the iterator and then outside the for loop code block here I'm going to um, just redefine the supervised data or overwrite it supervised data one more time dot drop na dot reset uh, reset index and drop is set to true okay and then we'll get the head again supervised data dot head 10 uh, something is oops supervised data right great that's a lot of data <laughs> okay so as you can see here from month uh, from January through to December we have the sales differences and uh, we've got our 10 rows because we have um, defined that we want the first 10 rows here so you got the sales difference for each store based on each month the next step is the coolest step for me and that is to split the data into training and test data so the train and test data so here we're going to split the data into uh, into train and test okay so the first variable train I zoom back again train data is equal to supervised underscore data minus 12 and here is the opposite actually right and that's the test so this is for the um, previous 12 month and this is for the coming 12 month so we're going to print here train data shape and let's concatenate that with the train data not shape oops uh, yep that's correct and here the test all right great just uh, capitalize the t all right perfect so the next step i'm going to take is uh, to use the min max scalar and this is basically to scale the feature values to restrict them to a range of minus one and one and i'm going to show you why so let's actually 
uh, I'll create the scalar min max scalar and the feature range here is equal to minus one and one. I believe that's correct. Yep. Okay. And we're going to fit now the uh, train the train data, right? We're going to fit it in the scalar. So scalar dot fit and train underscore data. Okay. And then after the train underscore data, I'm going to transform scalar dot transform train data and also the test data. Oops. Control S to save that. Let's run this. Great. So in the supervised data frame, the first column always corresponds to the output and the remaining columns act as the input features. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, declare the X underscore train and the Y underscore train. And this is equal to train underscore data column comma one column and train data here is column comma zero column one same goes exactly with the test data so remember always that in the x or the y train and test the first column will represent always the output okay so the y underscore train y underscore train dot travel same goes for the test and then let's go ahead and print everything so x underscore train the shape here is x train dot shape one, two, three. Okay, the Y underscore train, the X underscore test, and the Y, oops, let's make it like that, Y underscore test. Okay, and that looks good to me so let's run that and there we go we have the first column here is the output and the second columns or whatever comes after is the input this is the shape of the x and y train and test so everything we've been doing so far is just data pre-processing and in our last step of data pre-processing, we're going to make a prediction data frame in order to merge the predicted sale price of all the trained algorithms. So let me actually add a text here. So, um, or create or make, make prediction um, data frame to merge the predicted sale prices of all trained algorithms. So let's add that code here. And let's get the sales dates. And this is actually the sales or the monthly uh, monthly underscore sales dates. And uh, no, nope, not yet. So uh, minus 12 right dot reset uh, reset index drop equal to true and then the predict underscore data frame 
is equal to this is a new variable we're going to declare and that's uh, the sales dates right so we're going to uh, get the pandas dot data frame and we will pass inside as an argument our sales dates let's run that code so far so good but we also need to extract the actual monthly sale values of the last 13 months um, since they correspond to test data set and basically these values will later be used to find the predicted sale prices from the the output or the predicted output of the sales differences or the monthly sales differences so let's go ahead and add that here so the actual sales so we have the actual and the uh, forecast that were predicted sales so the actual sales is equal to monthly underscore sales and that is okay and as we said we want the last 13 month so minus 13 column dot to list method all right um, if you want to print that just to show you okay see these are the sales for the last 13 month all right good so everything we have done here is just uh, the core part of the pre-processing we didn't do anything we didn't do the forecast yet so that's where the fun part will begin we will begin with the forecast sales using linear regression coming up next welcome back so linear regression basically tries to find a linear relationship between a set of input variables and the output variable. So weights attached with the input variables are updated during the training phase so that the predicted output aligns well with the designed output. And to train the linear regression, we can simply call it using the science kit or the scikit-learn package, and we will pass the training data. And by the way, we can use the predict function of the linear regression model to get the predicted outputs. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our text. So what we're going actually to do here is to create the linear uh, linear regression model and also the linear regression prediction or the... Um, or rather um, the predicted outputs, right? So the predicted, predicted output. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's initialize the linear regression. So I'm going to call it uh, LR underscore model, right? And this is equal to the linear regression. Okay, great. Next, I want to fit the X and Y train inside the linear regression model. So LR underscore model dot fit X underscore train and Y underscore train. And finally, I want to uh, declare a variable. I will call it the linear regression prediction. And I'm going to pass the X test inside the uh, predict function or method. So LR underscore predict or pre maybe and I will take the LR model model dot predict method and here inside I want to pass the X underscore test all right let's run that remember when we use the min max scalar here uh, or was it here right we actually need to transform the predicted values to their original scale so we'll call for a function called inverse underscore transform so let's do that quickly so i'm going to take the linear regression model lr predict lr pre and i'm going to reshape for minus one and one and let's declare a new variable i will call it lr underscore pre underscore test underscore set and then i'm going to take the numpy package and use the concatenate method uh, 
To concatenate what exactly? Two things. The linear regression prediction here and the X test. We're going to concatenate both of them. So the linear uh, linear regression pre and the X underscore test. Um, what did I do? Not, it's not correct. It's inside an array, inside the list. Okay, and the axis is equal to one. And then I will uh, take the same LR pre test set. And this I will use the um, the inverse inverse transform method. And I'm going to pass here the linear regression prediction. So LR underscore pre, and I'm going to pass here the linear regression prediction test set. And let's run that. We have got an error. So um, where is the error? Access one is out of bounds for array and dimension one. Oh, you know what? Um, I just mistyped that. Not the uh, not the model. I need the prediction, right? The LR pre that this one here. Now I think it will be okay. All right, perfect. So sorry for that. That's so. Let's um, recap very quickly. We have created a linear regression prediction, and we have reshaped it right and then we have created a test set for that um, linear regression prediction model and we use the numpy package and we have concatenated the prediction and the x test and then i've overwritten that i've used the scalar here and that min max scalar as we have used above for the pre-processing to inverse transform the uh, linear progression test set so what we have done, actually, we have created a, um, a test set matrix. This is a matrix, actually, right? This is a uh, set matrix. And this matrix, what it contains, it contains basically the X test. So this is the, the, the test or um, the input features of the test data. And also it contains the predicted output instead of the real output. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's write it. Contains the, um, the input features of the test data and also the predicted output. So once we have actually restored the scale of the predicted output for the sale difference, uh, now we need to calculate the predicted sale values. Um, so let's actually, let's, first of all, let's create a list. I'll call it result list. So once we've calculated that predicted sales values from the difference values, we are going to append it to that result list here. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's loop over. So for I in range, let's change it for index in range from zero and then the length of the linear regression pre test set so we're going to append so result underscore list dot append the linear regression that's a lot of things to say the linear regression pre underscore test underscore set and that I want the the iterator or the the index in this case and the first index of the iterator okay plus the actual underscore sales and that also with the iterator so outside of the for loop here, I'm going to create a new or declare a new variable. I'm going to call it the linear regression prediction series. So LR pre series. And this is actually the series of the result list of that list that we have created here. We have appended everything. So 
um, the pandas dot series and here the result list and we'll give it the name of um, linear prediction and also the data frame so predict data frame so the, uh, the predict data frame actually is going to merge the linear regression prediction series this one where the left index is true and the right index is also true so this is equal to predict underscore data frame and we're going to take the linear regression pre uh, series this one here I'm going to pass it inside and I'm going to set the lift the left index to true and the right index is also to true uh, oh I did not merge So since we have calculated the predicted sale values of the test data, we can now evaluate various metrics for uh, the um, LR linear regression model. And we're going to compare the predicted sale values with the actual sale values. And that's the core of what we're doing today. We want to compare between the actual and the predicted sale values to see the deviations, to see the differences, and to learn from that and this is a very good way to show your boss or the, the board or whatever um, just in order to uh, take this or take any deviations in considerations to um, just to avoid it in the future right for your sales plans okay let's go ahead now and add that piece of code so i'm going to use here the mean squared error the mean absolute error and the r2 score okay which we have import them here uh, where here from the sk learn metrics this is for the evaluation now let's go ahead and create three different or declare three different variables um, again for the mean squared error the mean absolute error and the r2 score so i'm going to say l r underscore um <laughs> we call what mean squared error so m s e mean squared error. all right so that seems to be a good variable name so numpy dot square root and we're going to pass the mean squared error uh, function and inside here the predict uh, predict data frame uh, first of all uh, let me actually comment this for the moment and let's actually print the um, the data frame the predict data frame um, in order to avoid any key errors in the future so we have here data and linear prediction this is the name the exact name that we have given it this exact name you should be very careful this exact name should be used while you are doing your evaluation right if you will use any other name it will not work uh, just to show you so let's go ahead and get back here predict data frame so that predict data frame here which has the date and the linear prediction right but if you're going to use any other name so let's say for example lr right pen is going to complain actually it's going to yell at you and it's going to give you a very nasty um uh, error right so let's go ahead and continue our monthly sales with the sales here and minus 12 for the um previous 12 month so let's just for the sake of demonstration let's print linear regression mse mean squared error all right and concatenate that with the l r underscore mse we're going to see now a very ugly error message it's a key error message there you go so um key r l r it's not defined they, they don't know that LR, which 
I've just um, uh, deliberately written it just to show you that's going to give you this key error. So if in any um, machine learning or project you're working on and have faced that key error, you should understand that inside the data frame, you should only enter the index which is defined in that data frame. All right. But if I'm going to write what we have uh, set here exactly linear prediction and let's run that one more time we should get a good um, a good result right so this is the first evaluation so the linear regression with the MSE I want also with the mean absolute error and R2 All right this we didn't create yet so let's just delete that and let's go ahead here and create them so I'm going to call it LR underscore MAE and then I'm going to pass directly mean absolute error and the mean absolute error inside I'm going to take the predict data frame again with that linear prediction good with one single quote and monthly sales with the index of sales and again with the previous 12 month all right and finally let's get the lr underscore r2 and this is the r2 score and again the predict data frame with the um, linear regression uh, linear prediction again with one single quote don't know why it continues to do that right monthly sales basically it's the same thing right monthly sales sales and minus 12 uh, minus 12 column all right and here lr underscore mae lr uh, underscore r2 All right, let's save that. Let's run that one more time. And we have got a lot of stuff here. Why, uh, why do that? Uh, <laughs> you know what? Let's actually cut the whole code. Let's delete that. And let's run everything from the top. All right, good. Now let's add again paste that, run that again. All right, perfect. So now we have got the linear regression R2 equal to 0 0.99 for the R2 score. For the mean absolute error, we got this number. For the mean squared error, we got this number. Now the model looks pretty fine in predicting the sale values. So let's visualize the predictions against the actual sales, right? Okay, so here Okay Right, let's add the code. So let's go ahead and get the figure um, Figure fig size is equal to 15 and 5 and then we're going to plot that, plot the um, monthly sales with the date. So this is for, um, so this is for the actual sales. And predicted sales so plot dot plt dot plot and here the predict underscore data frame again with the date all right and let's give it a title plot dot title okay and give some labels plot dot X label the date is 
um, just a big convention, the X label is on the horizontal axis and the sales on the vertical on the Y axis. And it's visually appealing if we'll add some legends. So plot dot legend and we will say here first of all the original or actual sales and uh, predicted sales all right looks good let's show that on the screen and let's run oh, we have an error uh, plot the plot print Okay, what's the error? Key error. Oh, again, um, because, okay, okay. That's the, the error that I was telling you. Now I've fallen again in that key error, right? Should be linear prediction. So it would be whatever you will, um, you will type inside that predict DF right here. Okay, so we're going to substitute the sales with the linear prediction save that run again and we have an error y plot dot legend actual sales predicted sales why is it complaining type oh it's uh, silly okay should be like that all right now we're good so as you can see here, we have the actual sales with the blue line, with the blue color line here, the predicted sales only from 2017 till 2018. So, okay, so you can see here that from 2017 uh, till 2018, actually, um, it's, it's pretty, pretty okay. I mean, if the blue line represents the actual sales, just hold on, let's make it like that. If the blue line here represents the actual sales and the orange represents the, the prediction, that means that it didn't do a bad job here in this area, in predicting this area. It didn't do a bad job. It's actually very, very close with some steepness, but still, um, that's, that's very, very close. The prediction and um, the actual sales are really tight here you can see from the month between august and september so this is from september till july and in my opinion it's very very close from 2017 till 2018 that's the year that we've chosen um it's very close all right so that's it guys thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video till then stay safe and be well Bex out <laughs>